Hey, good morning. Hey, wake up. welcome to this new segment called Hot Topic. My premiere showing of the Hot Topic uh, this morning with former uh, Senator Rory Respicio. Uh, this is re being recorded, and thank you again for uh, for being with us this morning. Our premiere showing. This is going to be uh, this is being recorded to be shown on uh, TV One on Docomo Pacific or GNN Channel 17 on GPA. It's a half hour segment, and we're kicking off today with uh, former Senator Rory Respicio. Hey, good morning, sir. How you doing, man? Good to see you. Yeah, you, so you, hey, you look refreshed. Refreshed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let's let's get right to it, uh, Senator. In in regards to um, to <clears throat> the thirty third and into the thirty fourth, um, you know, uh, a couple weeks ago you wrote a a, a, a a column. You write regularly now for um, the Post, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, your uh, your article back then was say your decision changed for for the better. And actually, prior to writing this, uh, I think the, the genesis of, of, of this particular article was the criticism you had on the, by the new rules chairman, uh, Senator um, uh, Mike Smiklis, in regards to uh, basically, basically he, he said that you that you were in a hurry to get in the legislature, a lot of change in orders that, uh, that were not needed. And, and therefore, um, you went in there because you wanted to try it out, but even before it was ready. Y your your well, thoughts First of all, that? thank you for inviting me to your premier drill hot <laughs> topic. I, you know, I fully accepted the decision of the voters, and mm -hmm. I'm very, very grateful for the 14 years that they allowed me mm -hmm. to serve as a senator. And I, and I told myself, Jesse, that, you know, I'm going to move forward, and mm -hmm. I respect that the people did not want me to be part of the 34th legislature, at least for the next uh, two years. And so, I'm, I mean, that was my, my discipline. Mm -hmm. But after hearing uh, Mike Nicholas say that, um, that there was a mad rush to go in there, that mm -hmm. the building wasn't ready, well, I was compelled to uh, write a column, on not only that, but respond publicly that the building was ready, that we did receive an occupancy permit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that that mad rush he's uh, talking about, it took 26 years to move into that building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We served together in the legislature, sure. and we actually served in the, the, yeah, yes. the mm -hmm. temporary mm -hmm. uh, uh, sure. session hall. Uh, a lot of work has been done and a lot of cooperation with uh, other uh, agencies, mm -hmm. with the administration, with the uh, Guam Historic Preservation Trust, mm -hmm. with the uh, Bank of Guam as a, as a partner entity. You know, so in, in everything that Mike Stiglitz was saying that he was surprised by these uh, change orders, mm -hmm. I mean, I've said that if he simply showed up to the public hearing on that uh, resolution that adopted uh, that way sure, forward, sure. Mm -hmm. and also if he uh, showed up to um, caucuses or mm -hmm. rules meetings, he would have known every step of the way that this is what we were doing. What we were doing is that uh, we had a $4 million, well, $3.5 million grant from the Historic mm -hmm. Preservation mm -hmm. Trust, $4 million loan from the Bank of Guam that was issued via an RFP that uh, mm -hmm. Gina did, uh, and the Bank of Guam responded. Uh, and then we're using the monthly uh, rent from the post office mm -hmm, to sec mm -hmm. we securitize that a long-term lease to be able to finance mm -hmm, that, that mm -hmm. balance. And from the very beginning, we knew that there was money in the capital district fund mm -hmm. that we were going to use for the amenities, for the furniture, for you know just the, 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 sure. the things that were mm -hmm. important to complete the building. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Even before we had the ribbon cutting ceremony, I made it very clear to the architect and to everyone involved that we needed a occupancy permit. Mm -hmm. And that, because uh, I, I did that because when they did the ribbon cutting for the public library, sure. there was some criticism that uh, they moved in without an occupancy mm -hmm. permit. Mm -hmm. And with any construction, you want to have an occupancy permit sure, for sure. safety purposes. Mm -hmm. So we have an occupancy permit. The only thing that um, we knew that weren't, wasn't going to be mm -hmm. ready in time was the furniture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you know, I told the incoming uh, uh, majority that it's very simple, that they can just work off of folding mm -hmm, tables mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, folding chairs. Mm -hmm. Uh, you and I came at a time when uh, with Typhoon Pung San We were sworn yeah, in actually at the yeah, Supreme Court. <laughs> yeah, so mm -hmm. so in that case, I had mm -hmm. to take up a temporary office with uh, Senator Tony Sanford. Mm -hmm. uh, she allowed my staff and I to use one small office mm -hmm. room, and so we are kind of huddled there for mm -hmm. uh, several weeks until mm -hmm. uh, the landlord that I was mm -hmm. moving in mm -hmm. to fix the, sure. the Senator's mm -hmm. office because mm -hmm. it was damaged by that typhoon. So it's not unprecedented to do mm -hmm. those kinds of things. You know, um, we had a session there, uh, so the building is fully mm -hmm. functional. Uh, Mike Stiglitz claims that the Preservation Trust uh, asked them to, to not be in that building until everything is done. 
But you know, if I were uh, Mike Smithus, I would have uh, asserted the fact that there is an occupancy permit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Glenn Leon Guerrero, the director of public yes, works, mm -hmm. he, he made a very clear uh, outline of what exactly is entailed in getting an occupancy permit. Mm -hmm, because, mm -hmm. you know, Mike Smithus makes these uh, assertions, uh, Jesse, that, that everything was rushed, mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. the Preservation Trust was pressured, that DPW was pressured to issue the occupancy permit. And the problem I have with uh, him and people like him will say those kinds of things that impedes the integrity of uh, very hardworking people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The Department of Public Works would not issue an occupancy permit unless that building is 100% safe and occupiable. Sure. Yeah, so based on that, uh, there's no reason why the uh, he decided uh, to move out of the new legislature building or not continue staying there after mm -hmm, the end session. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, his decision has cost the taxpayers uh, $42,000 uh, in extra rent and about 10000 a month, so $20,000 in uh, extra power. That mm -hmm. uh, doesn't have to be uh, spent for that building. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, at a time when the public auditor says that uh, in their audit that the uh, government of Guam is the rent doubled, the rent has doubled the last decade. Sure, sure. You know, the legislature can can continue to be at the forefront of these uh, solutions by by just taking action. Mm -hmm. And I'm surprised that the that the speaker B J Cruz would would allow this kind of environment. Uh, when he was vice speaker, he was very uh, proactive, very active, very supportive of Speaker Wampad. And now that he's in the driver's seat, he's allowing a different driver to just put the brakes on everything. <laughs> and I guess that's what we're going to talk about. Um, well, no, oh, absolutely, and, 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 I, and I, I want to, I want to touch on, I want to touch on that as well because you were the the, the former committee and rules chair. And uh, there's one thing I gotta say with you, although we, we uh, in there, I mean, we, we got along well, we disagreed in, in, in issues, but there's one thing that, that I always said with Roy, Rory's work is good. When, you, when, when, when something went to his committee, he made sure that, that it was vetted and <coughs> made sure it, it, it went out there and it had his public theory. Whether you, <laughs> whether you use it and just, I don't know where, the, where this is gonna go, but it, it's, it's gonna get out, it's gonna get out there. Now let me ask you, here we, here we are going, getting close to a, to a month now. I'm sure there have been, I don't know how many bills have been introduced at, at this point. I think, I think the only thing at this 11 point, bills. 11 bills, so far as our informational hearings at, at this point, um, bills have yet to be referred, I guess, to the proper uh, committees. Uh, your thoughts on that? Because uh, I mean, I, I I can understand if if uh, Senator Nicholas is a neophyte, but 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 he's not at, at this point, right? So uh, he's acting like one, and maybe not knowing how to refer bills at this point. I think he's acting like uh, an obstructionist, mm. and I think that's what uh, the people of Guam need to see. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, do as I do as I say, not as I uh -huh. do. Mm -hmm. um, and with him, he's just. I don't know how uh, senators are allowing that mm -hmm. kind of uh, environment. Mm -hmm. Eleven bills has been introduced on a single referral, mm -hmm. and so if you take a look at um, all the things that uh, that he's wanting to do, nothing can happen. Not even a single public hearing can happen mm -hmm. unless he refers the bill. And if you recall, Governor Calvo uh, transmitted a bill that would have done so many things for the Guam Memorial Hospital. Mm -hmm. And granted, I didn't agree with raising taxes, but sure. what I would have done is at least, at the very least, hold a hearing mm -hmm. on those initiatives, and then the, 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 the legislature as a body can decide mm -hmm. what's good and uh, what's bad in terms of policy. Mm -hmm. uh, also, in that, um, that uh, effort, there was a bill to borrow uh, $30 million for the Guam Memorial Hospital. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and Mike Snickers refused to a hearing on that bill. So as chairman on rules, I had to exercise my authority to re-refer that to uh, Senator Dennis. And, and the point is, it's easy to say no to barring, but when it comes to barring for the island's only hospital that has a baggage take mm -hmm. everybody in, mm -hmm. uh, we have to we have to move because that was the only thing available at that time. Mm -hmm. The fact that um, it's a very, seems to be a very different legislature, that no bills are being referred and that what I'm hearing is that Mike Nicholas is making a lot of uh, unilateral decisions. I, I've never done those things as a uh, rules chair when he got elected, um, when he got selected to be rules chair, I congratulated him. Mm -hmm. And I told him that everything that I've done in that capacity really is uh, at the behest of the Democratic caucus or by the, mm -hmm. by the will of the body, which includes the Republican yeah. senators. Senator, I gotta take a quick break based on those and we'll come back, okay? Be right back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 